Hello class, it's Miss Roberts here. And today we're going to talk about gathering and supporting materials in preparation for research-based speeches. Let's begin. All right. So as always, I might be moving myself around just to provide visibility for these slides. All right. So first, let's go ahead and review support sources of supporting materials. First, we have our own base knowledge. Now, for speeches such as the informative speech and the persuasive speech, you're able to choose a topic that you know about, that you want to learn more about, and or that you're passionate about. In my years of listening to many informative and persuasive speeches and others, those who were most connected personally to their speeches gave more passionate and more engaging deliveries. So if you're trying to figure out what to do for your speech, think about topics that you're interested in, topics that you have a connection to, and the audience can feel that connection. Then we have library holdings. So the best source for research help is a librarian. That's what they major in. That's what they're all about. So go to our local library, excuse me, our school library and our local library as well, and look at the online catalog, books, and reference resources for additional help. But then we have the internet. So we have search engines, additional internet sources, and we have to think about how to evaluate internet sources. We have to think about, is this source credible? Does this go for my topic? And is this in the category of expert opinion or online commentary? Here are some additional criteria for evaluating an internet research resource, excuse me. But if you have any questions, please let me know and go to our class library, college librarian. First is accountability. So who is responsible for this website? Is it from a trusted source? Is it a blog post? Does the person, if they're not an expert, do they cite their sources? Who is responsible for this site or this source of information? Is the information correct? Is it free of bias? So are there any economic or political biases associated with this information? Is the site and, and or information current? Does the layout and design facilitate its use? So if you think about websites from back in the day, it was pretty much just maybe a couple of headings and a bunch of text that we read through. But now we have access to video, easier user interfaces, so think about the layout of design to see, hey, does it have good information? And sometimes if there are websites or authors that are putting out disinformation, misinformation, might have a lot of ads or even misspellings within the website. So just think about the design of the website and what it looks like in addition to the other criteria. And is the site inclusive? So if you want to by materials that are inclusive to different populations and are looking for those types of resources, put that in your search as well. Then we have online databases. So as a student of this college, you should have access to many online databases. You want to also look at full text databases. So you'll have access to the entire piece of research. If you are looking for an article and it's not full text, do not fret. Let me know if you have any questions or for a quick response, go ahead and go to the librarian. I've had to do this many times when I was in a bind. I looked for my article, did not have the full text. And if we don't have it available through our library already, librarians will find and provide the information free of charge to you. So let me know if you have any questions or just go straight to our campus library. All right, so when we find our online databases, you want to go to the library's homepage. There are databases that are based on subject, topic matter, or 
larger databases with a bunch of information. So again, the library has many different types of resources to help you out and contact the librarian to see which database is right for you. Then we have research strategies. So for our research-based speeches, a bibliography is required. So whether it be an MLA or APA, make sure that you're formatting consistently. Providing just links or a list of names is not enough. I provided a database, gener excuse me, a citation generator where you put the information in the boxes and it'll provide the resources. For those videos, I will show you what those citation generators look like, but just make sure that you use a generator or resources such as Al Purdue to show you exactly how to format different types of sources. Depending on the source, whether it's print, online, or video, or others, it changes the way that it's formatted. But points will be lost if your bibliography is not formatted properly. Make sure to assess the usefulness of your resources. Think about the frame quote explain technique where you're citing the sources and you provide the citation, but you also have to think about connect the significance of that information back into the speech. So you can think about in reverse, what is this piece of information trying to illustrate or what's it trying to demonstrate and support? Then take possible notes and Sometimes the source might have a chart that you might want to use or graph or information. So if you want to use that piece of information for your paper and or your presentation, research you can evaluate research for your visual aids as well. Okay, then that's a little bit. There you go. All right, so how to effectively how to take effective notes from your sources. So think about, okay, this piece of information is really good. It shows significance, it shows trends, it supports what I'm talking about. And those can be examples, statistics, opinions, or additional supporting material. You can also use quotations, but you want to make sure to put quotation marks within the outline and cite that source verbally, such as, such as that says, such as that states, but make sure to cite that source verbally and within the outline. All right, so let's review the types of supporting material. So there are different illustrations such as brief, extended, personal, hypothetical. The brief illustration is the stat or fact that you say in passing according to such and such and then the stat. But then the extended example, is a story based on that stat so you can provide a testimonial a longer quote or you can talk about a personal anecdote so a personal story or a personal narrative that's connected to your speech topic finally you can provide a hypothetical question or hypothetical scenario which connects the audience to the topic that you're talking about All right, then we have our statistics, facts, and stats. How do we use them? We can think of them as hard numbers or percentages, but because stats hold so much weight, we want to make sure that they're reliable, authoritative, and unbiased sources because numbers are supposed to be objective and accurate. If the statistics are faulty, then it can also bleed into the reasoning and the argument that you're trying to make within your speech. But then we have opinions. So opinions can bring context that just providing pure stats can't, but there's also different types of opinions. You have to figure out which one is right for what you're trying to do. So expert testimony is the most reliable and strongest form of opinions because they're basing their opinions on research and trends and they are within the field. Then we have lay testimony, so layman testimony, everyman testimony, and that also provides a different perspective because 
there's one perspective where we have our expert testimony, but we also have people who are impacted by a certain phenomenon or they have their own narratives, which provides detail and color to the story that maybe expert testimony or stat can't. So word on the street type of testimony or narrative-based testimony does have its place, but just make sure to also provide that strong hard evidence to balance it out. And then we have a quotation from a literary source that can also provide supporting material. Okay, so I have to move myself over here for this little diagram. All right, so how do we use our statistics effectively? I mentioned the frame quote explain technique. I borrowed that technique from when I was a writing tutor, but I like to talk about it in both my writing assignments and my speech assignments because it reminds us to frame or cite the source, who's the author and or what was the title of the work, then quote or paraphrase to provide the direct quote or paraphrase and information you want to provide, and then explain. In English, there is this term called drop quote, where you're just adding quotes without explaining the significance of information. In speech, we do want to weave in our information just so we don't feel like we're interrupting ourselves with in a presentation but using the frame quote explain technique it will help us out because after we cite our stories and say our information now we explain to the audience the significance of the information what is this trying to show what are we trying to say with the information provided so with, with effective tech statistics we have reliable sources that are unbiased, authoritative, so we're able to trust where it comes from. Routed numbers are good too. So if they're not routed, that doesn't mean you can't use it. Routed numbers are a lot easier for the audience to digest, but if you want to use exact numbers, that's fine as well. And then visual aids, charts and graphs, especially when you have a lot of numbers. Throwing out a lot of numbers has a certain impact, but having those same numbers on a chart or a graph provides a larger picture. Now, finally, let's just review some of the best supporting material. So criteria for selecting the final material, what is the magnitude, what is the impact of the information of your topic that you're talking about, is it relevant and is it current, how concrete is it, can the audience grasp what you're talking about? You have different types of sources, different types of supporting material. So we have our hard evidence, soft evidence. We have our testimonials, experts, word on the street type of testimonials. So having a mixture can be the most effective to drive home what you're saying and to report your ideas. Using humor can help when the topic calls for it and sparingly. So if you want to use humor, just be careful with it. But if it works, then it works. And especially as an attention getter. Then finally, suitability. Is information that you're looking for suitable for your topic? Is it relevant to your topic? Does it go with your topic? And does it make sense for the overall, overall purpose of your speech? All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to and listening to this lecture. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. It's about to be evening, but if it's in the day or if it's at night, thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I will talk to you later. All right. Bye, class.